Hey, Bill, I'm in the mood for a switch up. I hit the function, hit the rose till I hiccup. I hit the stage and leave with money that's a stick up. She picks a perfect, so I told him I'm a Today we're talking about kinetic friction. Static friction's little brother. Like static friction, the formula for the force of kinetic friction looks very similar. With the inequality being replaced with an equal sign and the mu being replaced by the coefficient of kinetic friction. The main difference between static and kinetic friction is that static friction keeps the object from moving. And kinetic friction is what slows down a moving object. Another important point is that the coefficient of kinetic friction is less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction. Why? Why is it that I need more of a force to get an object to move than to keep it moving? All right, check this out. This object sitting on a desk and it's at rest. This object is moving, so it's not at rest. Pretty easy. Now what we're saying is that the coefficient of kinetic friction is less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction. This one's for this, that one's for that. I guess I could have flipped them around the other way, whatever. Now let's imagine that we're trying to zoom in here. The interactions between the surface of the block and the surface of the table. So we're zooming in everyone. Now these are the atoms of the block. There are many. Now this is the surface of the table. This guy, surface of the table. You have to take into account that these things have had enough time to settle in. These atoms are now in these ridges in here. So now this has to push against this little wall there. When things make contacts, they can make these chemical bonds between the atoms of the table and the atoms of the block. Now, let's say that we take a look at this guy over here. Let's do that again. Now, one of the trippy things is that things never really touch each other. They never come into contact. There's always some space between the atoms of the block and the atoms of the table. And that's because the electrons don't allow themselves to get too close to each other. So in reality, there's never been any contact between anything. You've never really touched anything because there's always an empty space in between. Now this just requires less of a force because it doesn't have to overcome itself from getting out of this ridge. Of course, you still feel the chemical bonds between the atoms of the block and the atoms of the table because those things are still occurring. That's part of what you feel when uh, you're pushing something, that's friction. There you go, that's part of the theory. Now, some of you wanted more animation, so I hired a team of creative geniuses who are using leading edge animation software and hours of computational simulation time, and they turned me into a pickle. Hey! Okay, imagine you're a pickle and you're trying to move a couch. As you increase the horizontal force, the force of static friction also increases, keeping the couch for moving. If you apply enough of a force, then the couch would move. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> That's the breakaway point. The couch starts to move and kinetic friction takes over. Well, there it is. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Today's video is sponsored by my friend Eric. He's also a physicist, and on his channel, he goes over the physics of shuffling. So check him out. Go check him out.